Washington Journal for July the 31st. And today, White, the new White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, gets sworn in to the new position by President Trump. That will take place at around 9.30 this morning. And then the president meets with the entire cabinet. That includes the current attorney general, Jeff Sessions. It was on Saturday that Massachusetts governor signed a bill allowing for the rec recreational use of marijuana within a year. In Michigan, there's a ballot initiative that if approved and passed would allow those in that state to have the highest possession limits of marijuana in the nation. And USA Today's lead story today shows that even in states that allow marijuana use legally, there's still issues with smuggling and trafficking. With all those things in mind, and we'll show you that as the hour goes on, we want to get your thoughts about specifically recreational marijuana use and if it should be legalized. Uh, some of you in those states already that do it can give your thoughts. Those of you maybe are considering or live in states that are considering can give yours. But we want to get your thoughts overall on if recreational marijuana should be legalized and give us uh, maybe concerns you have or support you have for it. If you support this move, it's 202-748-8000. If you oppose it, 202-748-8001. You can post on Twitter at our, what are, at our Twitter account there at C-SPANWJ and on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash C-SPAN. The Concord Monitor picks up the story that was written by the Associated Press's Bob Salzberg about an effort signed into law by the Massachusetts governor. It reads like this, saying that it was Charlie Baker, the governor there, he said Friday that he remained wary of the impact of legalized recreational marijuana might have on the state, yet hopeful that revisions made in the voter approved law would ease some of his biggest concerns. The Republican spoke after signing a compromise bill approved by lawmakers last week that raises taxes on retail pot, establishes stringent requirements for the packaging and labeling of marijuana products, and spells out procedures cities and towns must follow if they wish to ban or restrict pot shops from opening in their communities. Baker also indicated a willingness to provide more funding to marijuana regulators if they needed a key concern of the group that sponsored the November ballot question. But the governor made clear that he still opposes the law, adding this. I worry terribly about what the consequences over time will be. And having spent a lot of time talking to folks in Colorado and in Washington state, there are a lot of pitfalls we have to avoid, said Baker, referring to two of the first U.S. states to legalize recreational marijuana. That's out of the Concord Monitor in, uh, in out of Massachusetts. If you go to the pages of USA Today, their lead story takes a look at some of those states that allow recreational use as well as medical use and talks about the, the concerns about the black market, as it's known as, about his smuggling and, and trafficking of this, saying that it was in June that Colorado prosecutors said they busted a 74-person operation producing 100 pounds of marijuana a month that's enough to generate $200,000 a month tax-free for more than four years. Police seized two tons of cannabis from dozens of homes and warehouses in the Denver metro area. Tangled up in the scheme were fathers, sons, and several former pro football players. Quote, those of us in law enforcement keep saying, quote, or in commas, legalization, or in parentheses, will not stop crime. You're just making it easier for people who want to make money. What we've done is give them cover. That's the Colorado Attorney General Cynthia Kaufman adding her thoughts this morning. So that's just some of the two issues, two states dealing with issues stemming from the legalization of marijuana. Uh, we want to get your thoughts as well, especially if you uh, support or oppose this effort, this idea of recreational use of marijuana being legalized, as some states have already done and some other states are considering. 202-748-8000 for Democrats, 202-748-8001. For those, uh, I'm sorry, 202 748 if you support this effort, and it's 202 748 if you oppose it. In USA Today, there is a map that shows where marijuana is legal in the United States. Uh, and when it comes to adult use and allowing it, several states, including Washington, Oregon, Nevada, California, and Colorado, uh, listed as well as, uh, well as Alaska. Other states allow it for medical use, and then other states allowing for cannabis ash extract to be as used as well. Some factoids uh, from this story also say that 65 million is the number of Americans who live in a state where recreational marijuana states are legal. More than a billion dollars, that's the value of marijuana sold in Colorado's state regulated and tax stores last year. That's just some of the two effects that came out of the story by Trevor Hughes at USA Today. So to your thoughts, we turn. Sean Gaithersburg, Maryland, on our support line. Good morning, Sean. You're first up. Tell us why. Um, several reasons. I mean, it's kind of silly. Um, I think that uh, 
the fact that it's on the Schedule One uh, federal with uh, the state laws changing is extremely challenging to deal with. Um, I also think that uh, the, you know uh, it's still being illegal. Uh, you know the prison system. Uh, you know uh, everybody's in these prisons, and if we're um, decriminalizing it, then it's no longer. Uh, you know we're no longer putting people in jail for 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 doing this and then and then um you know uh, the the medical benefits as well that uh people aren't also um getting that's that's a concern as well because um you know there are people with uh uh you know genuine medical um needs that aren't getting that as well and so um at the very least uh you know some some practical uh um legality is 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 what what I would would be looking for. What is practical legality in your mind then? What does it involve? Well, I mean, uh, I, essentially just, um, you know, I, I, I just think it's silly in general. I, I say practical legality because I think sometimes we just kind of, we, we freak out and we have that uh, reefer madness and it's just kind of, it's, it's just silly. I mean, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, just untrue things uh, about, uh, you know, what what it does and, and everything like that. Okay, uh, okay, let's go to uh, another Marylander. This is Sarah on our pose line. Sarah, hi there, from Owens, Owens Mills. Thanks for putting me on air. Just want to say that marijuana should not be legalized. It's dangerous. Um, only medical, for medical reasons, perhaps, people that have cancer and other illnesses that really need it. But the, re the other population, they should not even be using it. It should be illegal. People need to go to prison for having it or for smoking it, for selling it, distributing it, whatever. Um, it's not safe for employers. It's not safe for employees. It's not safe for drivers. It would not be, I mean, my safety, everyone's safety would be, would be, would be at risk. So when you say it's dangerous, it's driving that you're concerned about or those who possibly might be under the influence of that or are there other aspects of when you say it's dangerous? Perceptual changes. I don't know if you've ever been around anyone that's high. Um, you know, they're just, they're, they're high. And uh, I mean, the, it's probably, um, and then, you know, I mean, I'm not really concerned for their lungs. I mean, there are smokers out there too, but really, the changes, the perceptual changes that they're when they're under the influence, that's a danger for everyone else. If if they're operating a machine or if they're at work, I mean, who's going to protect the employers? By the way, I mean that's another discussion to be had. Let's they, go. Yeah. Let's go to Brooklyn, New York, on our line for those who support it. Robert, you're there. Good morning. Uh, yes. When uh, usually they uh, the argument in favor of keeping it illegal. Uh, or at least in putting it on Schedule 1, is that it's a gateway drug to more dangerous substances. Uh, but with the, opiate, uh, with the opiate epidemic currently sweeping the country, uh, I constantly hear that, the, uh, that they were initially led to, uh, to use opiates by starting on prescription drugs like OxyContin and one or two others. And yet I've never heard any of those drugs called gateway drugs. And so that was so the argument you're making is at least you're applying that definition to one and not the other or, or to both. Then the point is the, the, the calling it a gateway drug is, seems to me thoroughly hypocritical, because the the drugs that are known to lead to opiates are not called gateway drugs, but marijuana, which as far as I know has never been established to lead to harder drugs, is called a gateway drug. It's uh, it's an excuse not a legitimate reason. How does your state deal with the issue of marijuana? Uh, New York, as far as I know, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's, uh, whether it's legal medically, but it's certainly not legal recreationally. Let's go to Maine. Linda is next. Uh, Linda on our pose line. Hi, Linda, good morning. Hey, good morning. Go ahead, you're on. Yes, uh, I oppose the legalization of mar recreational marijuana. I, I am a pediatrician, and I'm worried about the future of this country and even the state of Maine to begin with. Um, we have children now, seven to eight grade, that are, are not that are using marijuana. I don't know where they get it from, but 
I'm sure the adult people that has it, um, it, has, it is not going to decrease crime. It is uh, going to decrease the cognitive ability. We already have kids that are not graduating from high school. A lot of, a lot of kids are, are de- no motivation at all, and this drug can make that worse in the future. And it does not make the economy better. It may, as people say that, it will increase the, the taxes for the town, but in the future, it's not going to do anything. There are driving incidents, and it, it will not be safe for the people around. So I think um, it is truly a dangerous drug. It is Schedule One, and it's worse than cocaine. And yet, we are legalizing marijuana and not cocaine. So what's the problem? That's just some of the thoughts this morning on this idea of uh, the legalization of recreational use of marijuana and getting your thoughts there too. 202 for those of you who support it. If you oppose it, 202 Post on Twitter and Facebook too. Uh, this is out of Michigan, a uh, story out of Lansing, Michigan, uh, from last week saying that there's a ballot initiative there to legalize marijuana. And if it were passed, it would give Michigan the highest possession limits in the nation. The language the group plans to circulate would legalize and regulate marijuana for recreational use. Those over 21 could use marijuana, would still be unable to consume it in a public place or drive under the influence. The language circulating would also give Michigan the highest marijuana limits in the nation, allowing residents to legally carry 2.5 ounces of marijuana on their person and have 10 ounces at home. Uh, Nine states have already legalized the use of uh, the recreational use of marijuana. Under the push to do so in Michigan, Michigan will be tied with Maine which allows 2.5 ounces on your person for the personal possession limit. It would tie Massachusetts, which allows the possession of 10 ounces at home for the limit at on-home possession. But neither of those states allows as much as Michigan in the other category, meaning Michigan has the highest possession limits overall. Colin in Santa Rosa, California, on our line for those who support recreational uh, legalization. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm not really speaking so much as in support as if I uh, would like to be able to speak to those who are not in support of legalizing. Um, they really need to look at their approach to the logic uh, of their argument. They don't have any anymore. Uh, they, they, they've they assumed a burden that they can no longer really prove. And um, they, it's it's evident in every one of the calls that you've had so far. And, and it's been evident for years. Uh, it, one of their common claims is that it change, it, we, we don't know how it changes the developing brain of uh, teenagers or young adults. And um, since when, I'm, I'm asking a hypothetical, since when have we been so concerned about artificially or you know, changing the development of, a, of the brain of a young adult? We allow sugar, television, and now we're doing a whole bunch of different experiments with the Internet and technology I think that's a massive burden for them to, to shoulder to say that all of a sudden that's a sanctuary we're not going to put our hands on and that we don't we don't deserve to change their that's a huge a bold claim that, that they're making there that we're not allowed to go changing the the development of the brain of young adults I don't think so yeah I'm not saying that people under 21 should go smoke it but they have a long way to go to say that we're not already messing around with young people's minds. Uh, that's just one small claim that they go and make. Uh, several others are that it changes your perception. I heard that that was on one of the claims of the, the person that uh, called earlier. And um, once again, do, do we not do we not allow people's uh, perceptions to be changed, uh, whether whether they whether willfully or not, by uh, all sorts of different things? The effect that it has driving a car has a massive change on your perception. All sorts of things in our society do things that marijuana does. Only marijuana causes zero death, zero crime, it, it co- and there is no gateway effect. That's nothing but hearsay. There has never been one bit of proof for any of those claims. Gotcha, Colin. Gotcha. The Highway Loss Data Institute published results of taking a look at uh, states that allow a mecre- a recreational marijuana use and looking at the data that was involved when it comes to car crashes. It's published in the Insurance Journal. Uh, saying that the HIDL conducted a combined analysis using neighboring states as additional controls to examine the collision claims experience of Colorado, Oregon, and Washington before and after law changes. Control states included Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. 
plus Colorado, Oregon, and Washington prior to legalization of recreational use. During the study period, Nevada and Montana permitted medical use of marijuana. Wyoming and Utah only allowed the limited use for medical purposes, and Idaho didn't permit any use. Oregon and Washington authorized medical marijuana in 1998. Colorado authorized it in 2000. Uh, some of the findings saying that Colorado saw the biggest estimated increase in claim frequency compared with its control states. After retail marijuana sales began in Colorado, the increase of collision claim frequency was 14% higher than in nearby Nebraska, Utah, Wyoming. Washington's estimated increase in claim frequency was 6% higher than in Montana and Idaho. And Oregon's estimated increase in claim frequency was 4% higher than in Idaho, Montana, and Nevada. Quote, the combined effect for the three states was smaller, but still significant at 3%, according to the person who did the analysis, going on to say that the combined analysis uses a bigger control group and is a good representation of the effect of marijuana legalization overall. The single state analysis shows how effect drive differs by state. The Insurance Journal putting that out. We'll uh, send out a link if you follow us on Twitter. Uh, to You can read it for yourself. Thibodeau, Louisiana, on our opposed line. Janice, hello, go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, in my opinion, any drug that alters your behavior or thinking process is a detriment to the individual or society at large. This includes alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, and others. These drugs cause the aging process to escalate along with other medical problems. They interfere with learning or making decisions or even relating to others. Recreational drugs lead to dependency of the worst kind by curbing the intellectual and maturity growth. Aging is bad enough to endure without hurrying mental shutdown with mind-altering drugs. Medical drugs prescribed by well-meaning physicians cause enough trouble. Okay, here's James in Oregon on our line for those who support it. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm 72 years old. I'm in Oregon. I don't use marijuana, but I think there are some real pros to legalizing marijuana that we found here in our state. Number one, uh, the revenue from the taxation has been a big help in our state. Our revenue last year was double what we expected uh, the revenue to be. Uh, number two, we've got our prisons full of people convicted of, of uh, buying, selling, and using marijuana. It's costing society a lot of money to keep all these people in prison, and I think that if we legalize that we wouldn't have that. Thirdly, as long as you legalize alcohol, Alcohol and marijuana are in the same boat, and one was not. Uh, it, one causes as many problems as the other. So, if you're going to legalize alcohol, you should legalize marijuana. Um, that's mainly what I have to say. Uh, off of Twitter, this is uh, Ghost Eagle Dean, who says whether it's legal or not, it will limit your ability to gain employment. Four in ten from Rust Belt are failing drug tests for good jobs. And then uh, BC Venice also saying that alcohol is deadly. That look what happened when the government criminalized it. The black market thrived. Prohibition doomed to fail. That's kind of the argument being made in today's USA Today story, which you can read online or in uh, the paper version this morning, which takes a look at some of the smuggling issues when it comes to uh, marijuana use. Uh, that's available at the USA Today website. Kevin in Virginia, who also supports it. Hi, Kevin. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, well, the gentleman from Oregon kind of took what I was going to say about the tax revenues. But you can also control who you sell it to. You know, first time I used marijuana was back in the early 80s. Yeah, I could get it that easier than I could a pack of cigarettes or any alcohol. But the other thing is you're hurting the drug cartels. You're taking millions of dollars away from out of their pockets. They put it into the state revenues for taxes and such. And, and basically, that's all I got to say. And I've used it for a long time on and off throughout my life. I went about nine years about it um, without using it. And I've, I've been pretty good with, you know, doing without, without it. But uh, as far as I know, it hasn't really hurt me any ways possible. I'm employed. I work. I pay my taxes and I vote. So but that's all I got to say. Kevin do, you, Kevin, do you think, though, if you legalize it at a certain age, I'll just say arbitrarily 21, that it doesn't filter down to those younger ages as well, even though you legalize it that way? 
Well, it just makes it harder for them to get because um, when I was underage, I had people buy me alcohol. Or we used to stand in front of the liquor store and ask the strangers to get us alcohol, or we had an older friend that was able to get us alcohol. So when there's a will, there's a way. That's what the Bible says. But um, even a way, but it just makes it harder for people to get in. And if you make it a little harder, you may be towards some people, some of the youth. Uh, that's Kevin in Virginia to his point about uh, the smuggling that's going on in the USA Today piece um, uh, this morning. It adds this fact, saying that less marijuana is crossing the border. According to the U.S. Border Patrol, the agency's marijuana seizures dropped by almost half from 2011 to 2016, from 2.5 million pounds to 1.3 million pounds. Agents hesitated to speculate about what caused the drop, but during that time, American consumers increasingly began buying domestic pot. Quote, we've seen it peak in 2011. Obviously, that's been down in recent years, but that's never to say that it's not going to pick up at any point. That's uh, Justin Castrojohn, a Border Patrol agent with the El Centro sector in California. From Massachusetts on our opposed line. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. Good morning. I have experienced it through my whole family, and it's horrible. My daughter is currently in the hospital from hitting two car, uh, been two car accidents, breaking all her bones and everything else. Before that, she had started pot years ago. Pot, on top of that, when she went into hospitals, they gave her oxycodone. She got co combination. Then we were screwed really bad. She's really bad in really bad shape. Her kids died in her arms. She sat with them probably and did some of that. Not on to only that, on top of that, my, I have my nephew and my uh, grandchildren, uh, nieces and stuff are doing it under the age of 10, 12, 14, sitting with their parents and stuff. 666 society. So Sandra, your, your governor just signed, uh, it was based on a, a public referenda, but just signed legislation which would probably would put in act uh, at least le the restrictions within a year or at least the legal framework. What do you think about that act by the governor? Uh, yeah, it's good, but how are you going to stop it if it's, uh, it's, it's full blown running with uh, families? The families are screwed up. They, they, they sit down with them and do it. It's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. They think it's harmless. It's not. It leads to other things. It hurts the whole friggin' meal. Let's I go to uh, Mark in New York. He supports uh, le recre recreational uh, legalization. Hi, Mark. Go ahead. Yes, good morning. Uh, I've been using marijuana for 35 years medicinally since I injured my back, along with hard medication. <laughs> From the doctor I would agree that after 25 years old would be suitable for anybody to use it uh, we're finding out now that people are moving to California in Denver and Rhodes because marijuana the CBD oils from it is curing epilepsy there's a uh, um, uh, uh, scientific experiments being done in California proving that it's actually eating the Alzheimer's protein off from the brain and it's doing all sorts of other health things for us. I think we need to open up the government and experiment with it and see what other health properties that we get from it. So Mark, let, go back to your uh, thinking as far as it should be for 25 and older. What, expand on that. Why do you think that there should be an age limit that high? Well, I started at 19, and from what I understand, your, the male brain is not developed until it's 25 years old, and I would agree with that. So I would say that that would probably be a good age to use when the brain is developed for a child to use it. That would be my recommendation. Douglas is in Culpeper, Virginia. He opposes it. Hi, Douglas. How are you? Yes, good morning. I'm 74 years old, and I thank my God and my Savior at age 12. I accepted him as my Savior. I've never smoked, and I've never needed uh, cigarettes. And 
this world's getting in bad shape because nobody trusts us in the Lord to trust in medication. I don't go to a doctor. I'm very healthy, and I thank God for that. I mean that for all my heart. Jesus Christ is his name. He's our Savior, and we the whole world is gone the way of Cain. They've left. So, Douglas, to the specific point about the legalization question, why, why are you against it specifically? Because it's destroying our civilization. I mean, if a person who has a brain in the head, so-called brain, don't realize that it destroys the body. You're not supposed to put chemicals in your body. I mean, I don't take any medication, none whatsoever. And like I said, the people have got away from the trust, and they trust in drugs, they trust in our government, but they don't trust in the one they need to trust in. You know, we, we ask God to bless this nation, and we turn away from God. Hey, this world is sick. It's going downhill. And every person who is involved in this stuff is very sick. You know, that uh, marijuana's not going to make the brain smarter. We need to turn to the Lord, and this whole nation is going downhill. Gotcha, Douglas. Uh, Mark is in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Mark, good morning. Good morning, sir. You know, Hector, somewhere in America today, somebody's going to get killed because of a drunk driver. That doesn't make any sense. They know this is going to happen somewhere in America. Somewhere in America today, a minor is going to purchase some alcohol. Not go through somebody else. He's going to pur They're going to purchase some alcohol. As long as you have alcohol legal, there is no reason not to have marijuana legal, too. It's a whole lot more safer. I'm not going to say it's completely innocent, but it's safer than alcohol. I am a recovering cancer patient. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I got to the point where I could not smoke marijuana because I had throat cancer, my, my doctors prescribed me TAC pills because they weren't allowed to prescribe me uh, marijuana because I live in a state that doesn't have it legal. Okay? Y'all need to stop. They, well, not y'all. People need to stop acting like it's different. It is no different than alcohol. I know plenty of people who have been getting paid for being alcohol alcoholics by the government. There are no people on, on the government payroll for marijuana. Okay, that's Mark in uh, Columbus. We are gonna continue on on this topic, so if you are calling us, please continue to do so on it. 202 if you support this idea of uh, the legalization of recreational use of marijuana. If you oppose it, 202 you continue 8001 You can continue to post on Twitter, and on our Facebook page as well. We'll show you some other stories, including the lead story that uh, in the New York Times this morning about the decision by the Russian government, specifically from Vladimir Putin, about a reduction of diplomats saying on Sunday that the American diplomatic mission in Russia must reduce its staff by 755 employees. That's an aggressive new response to new American sanctions that seemed ripped right from the Cold War playbook and sure to increase tensions between the two capitals. That's the lead story of the New York Times this morning. If you go to uh, the analysis piece by David Sanger, he kind of breaks down what is uh, as far as that 755 number and starts with this saying, it's unclear how much the announcement will affect day-to-day -day relations. While the Russian news media said 755 diplomats will be barred from working and presumably expelled, there, does not, there do not appear to be anything close to 755 American diplomats working in Russia. That figure almost certainly includes Russian nationals working at the embassy, usually in non-sensitive jobs. A 2013 State Department Inspector General's report, last, the last concrete numbers publicly available, said there were 934, quote, locally employed staff members at the Moscow embassy and three consulates, and that's out of 1,200 plus staff members. That would leave roughly 345 Americans, many of whom report regular harassment by Russian officials. And of course, there are many non-diplomats working for the Russian government in Russia at any given time, experts from the departments across the government, from energy to agriculture, and a large station of spies, some working under diplomatic cover. It was on the uh, Sunday show, specifically the ABC uh, This Week show, that the Russian deputy foreign minister was asked about that expulsion of uh, American diplomats and technicians and the closing down of some facilities and the decision by President Putin. Here's what he had to say. Yes, it is. And I think this retaliation is long, long overdue. After the Senate, uh, the day before yesterday, voted, or rather on the 27th of uh, July, voted uh, so overwhelmingly on a completely weird and unacceptable piece of legislation, it was the last drop. If the U.S. side decides to move further towards further de deterioration, we will 
answer, we will respond in kind. We will mirror this, we will retaliate. By my co but my call and my whole point is don't do this, it's to the detriment of the interests of the U.S. Well, well, what are you talking about in terms of retaliation? Are you talking about possible sanctions, economic sanctions, punishing U.S. businesses, banning consumer goods? We have uh, a very rich uh, toolbox at our disposal. It would be ridiculous on my part to start speculating on what may or may not happen. We are not gamblers. We are people who consider things very seriously and very responsibly. But I can assure you that different options are at, on the table and consideration is being given to all sorts of things, both symmetrical or asymmetrical, to use a very popular word in, in the world of diplomacy. In a related story in USA Today this morning, uh, there is a story by Oren Durrell saying that the U.S., the headline says, U.S. weighs arming Ukraine as the threat from Russia grows. Uh, some of the story goes on to say that the question is being debated in the White House as violence spikes in eastern Ukraine, where Russian-backed insurgents have stepped up attacks on Ukrainian government forces, and as Russia prepares for a large military exercise that analysts expect will put more tanks on the borders of Ukraine and NATO countries, the logic behind arming Ukraine, which the Kremlin opposes, was endorsed this week by Trump's special representative to Ukraine, former NATO envoy Kurt Volker, who said defensive weapons, ones that would allow Ukraine to defend itself and would take out tanks, for example, would actually help, he said in a BBC interview that was last week. Let's go to Bronx, New York. On our opposed line, this is Alex. Go ahead. Okay, good morning. Uh, let me say that. Uh, uh, legalizing recreational marijuana use word hard not only those who smoke but also hard children and society as a whole as a country if we encourage and uh, profit from this voice uh, we will be undermining the if the very foundation of our government. I should mention to this issue, I think this is a time to impeach Trump for his embarrassing performance, as often of the senators and representatives uh, said, you know, representatives said. Uh, a lot of people in America believe that the Trump performance is so weak, and it is. Uh, should oh. we, you know, it is. Okay, uh, uh, Alex, I'm going to stop you there only because we're, uh, we're going to carry on with this topic. Charles from New Orleans, Louisiana, support line high. Charles from New Orleans. He's gone. Let's go to Mike, Ellicott City, Maryland, on our support line. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning, and thank you for C-SPAN. Uh, yes, I just wanted to call and make a comment. Um, Marijuana, I've, I've tampered with marijuana throughout my whole life. And, you know, it's one of the only drugs that's accepted by the older crowd. Younger people are going to always tamper with it because just by being illegal makes it see. No one thing about us adults, you can't forget how it used to be when you was a teenager. You know, you, you, when you was a teenager, things that, are, uh, that, that you're not supposed to do, they're the things that drive you toward doing it. You know, once you legalize a drug like marijuana, people that smoke are going to smoke. People that don't smoke are not going to smoke. It's just that, that's been the whole problem with this marijuana thing. If you legalize marijuana the day or tomorrow, there's people that smoke it, they get paranoid. They don't, they don't smoke it no more. I, I, that's it for me. None of that. I, I can't stay out of my mirror when I'm going to drive my car. Then you got people that do it for certain reasons, like the guy with uh, talking about the cancer. Some people need it to eat. You know, happy, sleepy, hungry. That's marijuana. You know, if anything, the most, most, the most, the most marijuana. Who? When was the last time you heard somebody OD in on marijuana? So you know you're what? you're you're saying that you take the taboo out of it. That means younger people will lose interest in it. Right. See, if you take away the uh, the illegality of it, you know what I'm saying? They will. They will. The, the sad part is they may find something else that's illegal. It's it's the the, the thrill of going to get it and. You know, uh, the police, you know, they, they riding by. or you, Just because you're not supposed to have it, that's how kids are. You understand what I'm saying? So they're going to always sneak behind the school and take a couple pops, you know, and stuff like that. Marijuana is not a gateway drug. Uh, uh, crack is not a gateway drug. People that get high 
they get high because they want to get high. They got problems in their lives. They don't have a job. You wonder why it's all out into uh, the the opioid epidemic is all out into the suburbs now. And you know, I'm I'm 47 years old. You know what? When I grew up, we we people have been been using pills and ODN on heroin all of. of since I can remember, but now all of a sudden it's in the national spotlight. Okay, that, okay, that's Mike in uh, Maryland. He mentioned some of the the young the use of young people. The one of the stories from the USA Today package this morning highlights the work of Deborah Hussain. She's an epidemiologist at Columbia University. Uh, it says that the data that which Hussain based her most recent study also showed slight drops in marijuana use among young people in Colorado in the years after legalization. Voters legalized the drug in 2012. Legal sales began in 2014. And in Colorado, the percentage of teens 12 to 17 who had used marijuana in the previous month dropped from 12.6% in 2012 and 13 to 11.1%. That's in 2014-15. Teens past year use dropped twice as fast, that from 20.8 to 18.8. Also highlights Washington State, which legalized recreational marijuana in 2012, saying that 17% of high school sophomores surveyed in 2016 reported having used marijuana in the previous month. That's down to tw from 20% in 2010, according to the annual Washington State Healthy Youth Survey. Next up is Virginia. She is in Waldorf, Maryland, on our line for who opposed recreational law legalization. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, my concern is health. Um, is it going to be like cigarettes affecting your lungs? Um, you know, you're talking long term. You're, you're talking long term effect then? Yes. Um, you know, like cigarettes, eventually they started putting different chemicals in them, making them addictive. And, um, you know, there's a lot of health issues surrounding it that need to be answered before it's legalized. Like, are we going to stop companies from putting some type of addictive drug into these tobacco or not tobacco into these marijuana products? Um, are we going to regulate? How is that going to be regulated um, across the board in different states? Uh, Jimmy in North Carolina. Good morning. You're next up. Morning, Pedro. Uh, yeah, I am for the legalization of recreational use of marijuana. I mean, the evidence is pretty startling that they have figured out that this is something that can actually help people. And if I want to take a hit at the end of the day, as opposed to drink a beer at the end of the day, what's the difference? I want to relax. I've had a hard day. I want to, you know, I just don't understand this argument of it's alcohol is safer than marijuana or any pill or any drug or any chemical i mean come on off of twitter this is lisa who says that recreational use of marijuana should be legal uh she adds but it not on the not used on the job and then jody says how do you keep people who are too young from getting alcohol uh that just asked that question again on our twitter page you can post at c-span wj and our facebook page is facebook.com slash c-span Kansas City, Missouri, oppose line. Hi, you're next up. This is uh, Hi. Suzanne. Hi. Hi, I'm Suzanne Meyer. I'm 73 in my 73rd year, and I have been through so much in my life. And I'm going to say that I think that taking drugs and marijuana is a very wrong thing to do, and it is against the Constitution for our United States of America. And our Constitution says do not promote religion, do not promote segregation. Do not promote dictatorship and do not promote immorality. And if we legalize drugs, that's against our constitution. But if we follow that constitution, we'll never get sick. And I prove this to myself. I'm 73 and uh, I gave up my Medicare because I never used it. Once I started practicing the laws to take care of my body and to take responsibility for it. So I don't drink, and that's against our Constitution. I don't smoke, and um, I, I, I don't take drugs. And if everyone would follow that Constitution and be able to uh, take care of their own bodies, nothing will happen to their bodies either. We want others to take care of us when we should be taking care of and taking responsibility for our 
Okay, let's go to Ron in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, who supports it. Hi, Ron. Go ahead. Hi. How's it going? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Yep. So um, it's a, basically a question of consent. We have the ability to choose what does and does not go into our bodies for the most part. Like a person who does not want to take a flu shot can refuse under religious or um, medical purposes. I've also known a woman who was pregnant and smoked every single day of her pregnancy, and the baby is actually a picture of health, and pediatricians actually are like, hey, can I see the perfect baby? So there's kind of a question of what are the actual negative health effects? There's none. Um, people shouldn't be sending other people with guns to enforce this law. It's insane. There's no reason for it. I don't know why we have to send people with guns to enforce this. Just a question of consent. Not everybody has consented to this, and it's kind of a shame that you have elderly folk that are trying to invoke the Constitution or religion and throw it into other people's faces. This is kind of the exact same fight as every other fight we have that nothing is ever going to get done on. Gay rights, everything. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, from our Facebook page, a couple of thoughts from there. This is Terry Shively who says, no, of all the friends that I grew up with that smoked that stuff as high schoolers and continue to do it through adulthood, all struggle to even adult. Can't keep jobs. Their grown kids can't stand them. They find it hard to even function. No, no, bad idea. Jeremy Baumeister says, yes, prohibition has been an abject failure and an expensive one at that. Marijuana is an industry, and we should deal with that. Again, our social media channels uh, always open in the sense, even as this show goes on, people uh, posting and even having uh, debates amongst themselves uh, during the course of the show. And you're more, more than welcome to post there too and follow us and like us uh, respectively as you do that uh, if you can. Uh, Dan from New York. This is on our pose line from Groton, Groton, New York. Hello. Hello, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Good morning. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my call. I'm opposed to it because it's just like, like, uh, be, you know, like alcohol, they glorified it back in the day in the same way as cigarettes. And they glorified it you hear, years ago with the 70s shows and all those other movies they made on TV, on the movies. And I see people that drank and smoke marijuana too. And either they're paranoid or they're just crazy, a few people I've run into. And I, you figured I've known a fella from high school that smoked ever since he was a teenager, and here he is over 50 years old, and I've talked to him, and he's got a raspy, growly voice from smoking cigarettes and pot, and who's going to pay for all this abuse that people, when they use these drugs? You don't have no big uh, marijuana company to go after when people got all sorts of health issues, or their children got issues from their parents smoking pot when they're pregnant or when they're running around the house when their parents are smoking pot and you know, get secondhand smoke from pot, which they always hear in, in New York, they say, when you smoke cigarette, take it outside and do it. And, all right, somebody's smoking pot in the house. Are they going to get up and walk outside and smoke pot so the kids won't, breathing, won't breathe secondhand pot smoke? No, they're going to sit there and veg out in the chair and smoke their doobie and have the kids inhale that secondhand smoke from pot. Okay. And then you're going to have. That's Dan in uh, New York. That's uh, uh, John Kelly's first day on the job as the White House uh, Chief of Staff, taken from Homeland Security. The Washington Times talks about what faces Mr. Kelly as he uh, comes to the new position, saying that Mr. Trump's new Chief of Staff is a no drama, politically incorrect retired Marine t General who has a habit of speaking his mind and getting things done. Plucked from Homeland Security, Mr. Kelly will be sworn in today. Join the inner circle of people charged with stabilizing a White House beset by chaos, infighting, and message-canceling leaks. He takes over for Reince Priebus. Uh, the president made that announce on Friday via Twitter, and the White House quickly followed up with a statement praising Mr. Priebus for his loyalty and Mr. Kelly for being universally respected. The move also shows Mr. Trump's love affair with military leaders continues. In addition to Mr. Kelly, the National Security Advisor is an Army Lieutenant General, and the Pentagon is led by retired Marine General James Mattis. And those who have watched Mr. Kelly make the transition from retired military officer to Homeland Security Secretary say he is probably the antidote to some of what plagues the White House. Quote, he's no drama, said Mark Krikorian, executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies. And he's coming to a White House riven with internal power struggles and a lack of discipline, said a Republican with intimate knowledge of West Wing operations. 
Anthony in Hyattsville, Maryland, support line. Hi. Good morning. Uh, I do support it, and I say it's already legalized. To the guy in Virginia, if he reads his Bible, since he's such a Bible thumper, he can see in Genesis where God created everything on the earth, and after he created everything, he said that it was good. After he created man, he or he commanded, the first commanded, not the Ten Commandments, but the first two commandments, was for him, for every seed on the face of the planet, of earth and every tree that bears fruit with seed, for you it is to be meat. We're not supposed to smoke marijuana, but we are supposed to eat it. We're not supposed to eat the animals. If you go back and read the Bible, we were supposed to befriend the animals and eat the, the fruit. Because, and I will say one thing, and I'm going to with this. If you go to Israel today, and people can look this up online, and see the videos in every uh, senior citizen place in, in Israel. They see the senior citizens marijuana because they know it helps them with their, uh, you know, your conditions, all all types of conditions that they may be having. So it, it was legal when it was created. God said it was good in the Bible, and it's other drugs like cocaine, heroin. They have to be processed. Even alcohol has to be processed. But marijuana grows naturally out the ground, and it's supposed to be food. That's, That's Anthony it. in Maryland. Uh, CBS News took a poll taking this idea of legalization of marijuana and asking people about it, saying that 61% of Americans think that marijuana use should be legal, a five-point increase from last year. And that's the highest percentage ever recorded in the poll. 88% favor medical marijuana use. 71% oppose the federal government's efforts to stop marijuana sales and its use in states that have legalized it. That including opposition from most Republicans, Democrats, and independents. 65% think marijuana is less dangerous than most other drugs. And only 23% think legalizing marijuana leads to an increase in violent crime. More generally on the topic of drug abuse, 69% think that it should be treated as an addiction and mental health problem rather than a criminal offense. We go next to Randy in Chicago Heights, Illinois. He opposes this idea. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to say a uh, uh, follow-up on that gentleman call about uh, secondhand uh, uh, smoke. Uh, you know, uh, when, you, when, you, when a person smoking marijuana or cigarettes, the first thing, if you're walking beside them or behind them, that's the first thing you notice that he has. Because you could smell that, that that thing. It's right on their body and their clothing and everything like that. And you know what? For another example, I had an uncle that owned the bar for 40 years. And you know what? When he went to the doctor, the doctor told him, you got to lay back on your smoking. And when he told him that he never smoked a day in his life, and that was all those people that were blowing smoke towards him, sitting on the other side of that bar. And you know what? The thing is, marijuana, if people are blowing marijuana at you, you're not getting drunk, you're getting high. And that's the thing, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know, it, it's a different kind of smoke. So I, I believe that it should be, you know, we're just starting off, we're starting from a, 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 a alcoholic system that, that's a mess now with alcohol, with drunken driving and everything. This marijuana, when you talk to a person smoking marijuana, they do have some kind of distraction or something in their voices that they're not thinking right. Would you trust a lawyer or a doctor or a banker or something like that that smoke marijuana to, to get a loan or get a car uh, uh, loan or something like that or put your money in a bank or something like that, that people that smoke marijuana? This thing is just another, another thing starting off from, from, from alcohol many, many years ago in the roaring 20s. This could start off a major, major, big issue as, as alcohol is now. Okay, let's go to Wendy in Roseville, Michigan on our opposed line. Wendy, hi there. Good morning. I, too, am one who is opposed to the legalization of marijuana. I know what it smells like, and I've known people that have done it. But what worries me is this: what if you get in a car and drive while you're still under the influence of it? You know, so many accidents and everything, and it just scares me. And also to see it in our food, that it should, it does not belong there. I'm just worried that this is going to be going all over the country, and the, those of us who do not use marijuana are going to really have to look out for these people that are taking it. And there's really no way to tell that they are under the influence until they get behind the wheel of a car or something and cause an accident. 
Uh, Michael from Ruston, Louisiana. Hi. Yeah, I am in support of it. Um, I do believe that we need to educate the public more on some of the data. Uh, again, one of your calls over already mentioned that there is not one case of someone overdosed. And the case of the woman that just spoke about someone driving, as far as it's, that's concerned, that's always been just without anyone realizing it. The big fight is against Big Pharma. It's Big Pharma. How so? Because as it is, marijuana has been more than likely been used by medicine men, shamans for, for ages. For ages, this has been part of our diet, as one of the causes previously said also. Big Pharma is the one that has the greatest to lose with the legalization, not the American people. If you turn to the style pages of the Washington Post this morning, a profile of the former Vice President Joe Biden by Roxanne Roberts and uh, the, posing the question if he's uh, possibly uh, ready for another run at the presidency uh, in her piece this morning, saying that if you think, and there's some a little bit of lead up to this that you can read for yourself, but she adds that if you think that sounds like a man ready for that golden political afterlife, where time is finally your own and nothing is on the line, you're wrong. Since Joe has left public life in January, the Bidens have never been more public. The past six months have been seeing the formation of the Biden Foundation, a way for Joe and Jill to support their pet causes, and the Biden Cancer Initiative to honor Bo. The University of Pennsylvania inaugurated the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement to study international issues, and the University of Delaware, the Biden Institute for Domestic Initiatives. Last but not least, there's a new political action committee, American Possibilities, a vehicle for raising money for Democratic candidates, and maybe for one last try at the White House in 2020. Delaware's favorite son and America's favorite uncle decided not to run in 26, a choice he made while he was still in mourning, and Donald Trump was just a political sideshow. Quote, do I regret not being president, Joe said this spring? Yes. The story behind that decision was Bo's illness, his death in May of 2015, uh, that he would not seek the Democratic nomination. It's the subject of a book that will come out on November 14th, uh, and this, every stop on the book tour will undoubtedly include a variation of what if. She adds that with Washington in chaos and the Democrats without a standard bearer, Joe Biden is arguably the most popular former vice president in history. His wife got a standing ovation when she appeared as a presenter in this year's Tony Awards. And earlier this month, there was an exciting buzz when the couple walked in the Manhattan's Mat Music Box Theater to see Dear Evan Hansen. It goes on from there. You can read it for yourself, though, on the website of the Washington Post. In Maryland, on our support line, Glenn, hello. Hi, how are you? You're on. Go ahead. Yes. Glenn, go ahead. There? Go ahead. You're on the air. Oh, okay. Um, I think we should legalize it because, one, it's not as bad as alcohol. When you say it's not as bad as argument, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, alcohol is addictive. Uh, people get drunk, cause a lot of problems. You don't see that with marijuana. Uh, I don't smoke it myself, but I think it should be legalized, put in the class of, mar of alcohol, sold only in in marijuana bars. Uh, the state will will, uh, you know, tax it. They will get money. Uh, the kids will sooner or later lose interest in it because the price will go down. The cartels won't be selling it so much, so kids won't be able to get their hands on it so easily because, it, you know, the cartels won't be selling it so much because it's not going to be worth their while. And uh, it, that, that'll that keep the kids from leaning towards harder drugs because that that's what they do they get into marijuana and then they 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 start experimenting with harder drugs but with you know with the problem with and um i just seen a thing on tv the other day that said that marijuana isn't as bad driving as alcohol so even if you do get in a car with smoking marijuana you're not as dangerous as you are drinking alcohol even let's though go, okay, that's glenn in maryland let's go to missouri on our opposed line this is richard uh good morning richard good morning how are you fine thanks go ahead hey i just want, want to say a couple of things about the post of the uh marijuana the thing about it is is that if they do pass this 
there's going to be so much chaos because of the thieves are going to be coming in. They're going to be wanting to break in the, the companies that do build the uh, that do build up the um, companies and stuff. Where the thieves will come in and crash everything out. They're going to turn around and it's just going to be nothing but a mess after mess after mess with this stuff. So they're going to have to do something about not legalize this because I don't understand about the government, but they're going to have to figure something else out uh, because this right here is really going to be a lot of nonsense if they do legalize this. It's just going to open the doors up, like I said, for a bunch of thieves to come in your home, knock somebody on the street, or do something to take the drug away from somebody because it, what I, well, here's, here's my concern is that they have to catch their thieves. Because uh, if they catch the dope dealers, they'll catch their thieves. Gotcha. Uh, uh, the, na the nation section of Washington Times this morning takes a look at Jeff Sessions, the attorney general. He'll be meeting along with the rest of the cabinet, by the way, at 10 o'clock this morning at the White House. This looks like gun prosecutions under uh, General, uh, I'm sorry, the attorney general's uh, tenure, saying that prosecutions for possession of an unlawful firearm we're up 23% over the past three months compared to the same time period in 2016, an increase that came after the Attorney General ordered U.S. attorneys to prioritize firearms offenses, according to the Justice Department. The Attorney General said the increase should send a message to would-be criminals that they will face charges if they illegally carry guns. Quote, following President Trump's executive order to focus on reducing crime, I directed federal prosecutors to prioritize taking illegal guns off of our streets. And as a result, we are now prosecuting, prosecuting hundreds of more firearm defendants, said Mr. Sessions on Friday in a statement that sends a clear message to criminals all over the country that if you carry a gun illegally, you will be held accountable. This is Cassie on our support line. Cassie, good morning. You're next. Hi, good morning, America. You know, I hear a lot of angry and anger in voices. And I'm an educator of cannabis. I've been smoking cannabis for 47 years, and it's actually preserves me. I go to the doctor every 10 years. I'm in good health, besides disabilities from a very serious accident. But you have to look at it. it. Cannabis goes back to biblical times. It starts off in Genesis 129. There are several verses in the Bible regarding cannabis. Also, to educate you people, Dr. Paul Nicahira from San Francisco, back in the 90s, brought in the cannabis card for medical purposes only because the CBD oils are remarkable. And the CBD is a blocking oil and that you inhale, you can get in little vape pipes. And THC is a mind altering. And I hear someone saying, you know, you're going to go to heroin and all this. That's a bunch of garbage. I don't know anybody, anybody, and I'm talking business, musicians, well-known musicians, popular, who smoke cannabis and have. Look at Willie Nelson. Come on, America. And okay, uh, okay. Well, we'll take one more call on this topic. This will be Wendy, Brunswick, Ohio, on our line for those who oppose it. Wendy, go ahead. Yes, I think young people stifle their psychological development by substituting drugs or alcohol. They don't learn coping skills in life. For example, why can't they, if they want to relax, they don't need to smoke pot, they can go for a walk, read a book, ride a bike. I, I don't understand why they need to grab a drug to um, cope with life. And that's the last call. Just one more tweet to show you. This is Steve Payne. Uh, he says, I jog every day and have a medical weed card in Arizona. It enhances my workouts and helps with arthritis. And the lower back, uh, there are other people who posted on Twitter as well. By the way, USA Today, the some part of the uh, story that we based uh, today's question on, here's Trevor Hughes' story, which you can find online. Smuggling persists despite legalization, saying bigger profits, an area where pot is illegal, is, uh, is luring growers. Is, is that there's more to the story as well, a couple of different stories when it comes to the topic overall. That's it for the question. A couple of uh, several guests joining us uh, during the course of the morning. First.